How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the 100 mod series. This is where we are playing with over 100 mods and in the most recent episodes we have formed our own kingdom and are currently fighting major wars against the Valandians who currently number around about 22,000 men. They started off with 30,000 and we've got that number down slowly but surely by taking their settlements and defeating their armies. If you have missed any of the episodes in this series be sure to go ahead and check out the play playlist down below in the description there is the entire playlist of this series and I know a lot of people have been telling me how much they've binged it recently so I very much do appreciate it everybody who's watched this series from start to finish or have just picked up random episodes I very much do appreciate it finally as well I just want to go ahead and let you guys know that we are closing in on 210,000 subscribers so if you haven't already I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button the milestone itself is within reach and I upload Bannerlord slash medieval gaming content pretty much daily. So one thing I wanted to start off today's episode with and a bunch of you guys picked up on this in the comments of the last video is we need to change our flag. It's something I've been meaning to do for a while and I really do like the idea of going gold and white. The question is do we kind of go goldy orange with a white uh, kind of insignia or do we sweep that bad boy up and kind of go the opposite and I think the opposite kind of looks a bit better. Some of these colors don't really turn out as, as much as I would like it to be honestly. Um, Actually, that's actually a pretty good gold right there. So we're going to grab that up and maybe go for a white background. Yeah, and a more of a cream uh, background. I really like that. So that's what we're going to go ahead and change to. Now, hopefully it doesn't mess up all of our banners and stuff. I'm going to drop a save. And honestly, we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does. But where we last left off the previous episode, we were currently sieging Charis after just taking this castle over to the east. And then we'd also made another clan as well. Oh, yeah, that quickly reminds me as well. Two new companions have entered the fray. We now have Arik Ironside and I'll stick his little backstory up on your screen right now. And then we also have Edon Alassane right here as well. Two very cool laws. If you want to get your character in this series, just be sure to go and drop a comment down below uh, with a character name, maybe a little bit of backstory, and you might be featured and become a companion of the legendary empire of the Flying Dong. But enough intro and more battle. Sorry, that was kind of a long intro. Uh, so I'll try and keep it short and sweet and get into some battles right away. So yeah, the idea right here right now is to maybe build a trebuchet or two i wouldn't mind a breach it would be very cool however i don't know if the ai is going to be able to withstand this or if they're just going to surrender because they are currently starving we also have like 2,000 valandian soldiers just scattered around here as well so i think they're going to be kind of either looking to commit into this battle or just retreating and uh, going away but i mean either way it's great to have them all here because it means they're not sieging my castle so this is really perfect you know, I might just build one trebuchet and go in for this. I'm like, I'm really interested. Like on one side, I really want to take the settlement, but also I wouldn't mind a battle where they just have overwhelming numbers. I think I'm going to build one trebuchet and see what happens. They might engage me with these extra 100 men turning up. I mean, they must be close to having the balance of power in their favor. Normally when they re reshuffle like that, oh, oh, no, they're too scared. There's no way. Okay, they are starting to disperse now. and They've caught one of my lords. Oh, this is difficult. Do I break the siege to go and help him? Uh, how many men does he have? Uh, he's down to 89 men. We could fight this and then rush over and try and save him. Because I don't want to break the siege, right? Yeah, so let's do that. Okay, here we are. Another beautiful Valandian castle. I guess this is more of a city than anything else. We are just going to literally rush it uh, without too much hassle or worry. Uh, we have the quality. Granted, they have 500 men, but we have plenty. Oh, yeah, and the color did work. Awesome. Okay, so this should be a big improvement to the previous episode. You guys were saying it was much harder to actually see uh, who was fighting who. Uh, but I think this looks great. And look at the colors. Oh, it looks amazing. I'm really happy with this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you prefer the gold? and white. I think it's just such a beautiful color set uh, and it also just goes really well in this battlefield. One of the really sad things as well about Bannerlord Sieges, which I wish they would go ahead and improve on, is the fact that you can make breach breaches mid-battle if you focus it down with artillery. Like, for example, if I got this trebuchet and I lined it up and I just started hitting away at their defensive positions, I could, in theory, actually break down this wall and create a breach, like if you were to do it on the campaign map. But it's like so in 
it, like not very intuitive and it's really hard to actually go and make that a reality and i just wish there was like a, a command you could give the ai to start bombarding it and sitting off uh just like more options like that i think would really benefit sieges uh because you can see they are bombarding it and they are they just created a really nice open point for our archers to hit and that's really cool but Again, it's just like you kind of always just have to hope it happens. And it's quite annoying when, it, when that happens. I would just, yeah, love for like more control in these sieges. Because I feel like stuff like that is super cool, right? Like you're waiting, you're sitting by one of the walls is under siege and you're like assaulting it with a bunch of men. And then you're waiting for this side to break down and then you charge through the breach whilst your men attack the other side. Like that just sounds super epic. And I feel like they could do a much better job of actually just making that a reality. Enough talking though, more raiding. And we are actually taking a fair amount of casualties in this battle i guess because they actually have like proper lord soldiers engaged in this that it, it makes sense that we would actually you know be taking a bit of damage here and there I do absolutely love the color that we have going for us though uh, for you guys pounding me to make this a reality i very much do appreciate it because now we get a little look see here at these awesome units i'm gonna jump down into my death take 47 damage are you guys not friendly no you're not okay we need to be very careful here yeah the spears are hitting me oh my god guys is just like tickling me slowly no oh i knew that was gonna happen man down who would have thought jumping off the battlement legolas slash aragon style wouldn't be an actual tactical decision get you to actually win battles however i am not one to learn from my past mistakes so lnd i also have no idea why the ai is at oh my god i'm actually gonna do the exact same thing no no oh no they've got me surrounded run 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 okay we're, we're a bit safer now okay shields up shield can oh my god as i stated i am still not one to learn from my mistakes hopefully third time is indeed the charm and it seems like it is in indeed the case and we are storming through look at that guy as well that helmet is so cool uh, and i think it really goes with the with the gold and white that we have for our banner now that is perfect the don banner will rise tool in the battlements there we have it the settlement has been taken pretty easy stuff considering i did absolutely nothing in that battle but sometimes when you are the king you don't have to do anything that's exactly why i am the king so that i can get my underlings to do the dirty work whoa what why do we have like batanian trousers on i've actually only just realized that uh, we need to have some decisions in the Valandian Empire. Speaking of which, I actually haven't seen Britannia in so long. They, Since they lost their initial war, I feel like they've really just done absolutely nothing in this game whatsoever. We, of course, are going to take this settlement for our own, and we're going to immediately go to the Dementia Hierarchy. We are going to claim the county. And the great thing about that is it is going to give us the uh, access to all the lordships as well. So as soon as we claim this, we can then usurp everything. And now we have to quickly rush over to this battle and try and save our lord. I don't mind if our castle gets sieged. It's going to take him time to actually build that siege camp, but we do need to try our best to save our lord. I would hate for him to be captured and tarnish the empire of a flying dong. Uh, no, we didn't unfortunately get there in time. He was taken prisoner. However, we do also now have this army stationary and ready to die. So we will just auto resolve that and uh, take a pretty clean sweep. We lost three men from our army, which I'm happy to do. And we're going to continue on our quest of just letting all of these guys go free. Again, what we could do, honestly, is like, because he's the leader, right? Ramond is the leader of this clan. Let's just double check. Uh, Ramond, wait, no, is he the Lord's clan? I I'm so confused. Oh, okay, yeah, so he is actually part of, okay, I was going to say we could try and take him prisoner and then convince him to join us. It normally gives you a little bit more weight, but yeah, in that time, it didn't actually look like it was that useful. I'm going to take my prisoners as well. We have a couple more to recruit from, which is good, um, and then everybody else is fine. We also have 21 upgrades. Uh, these tier 4 pikes are getting up there. Well, yeah, they're all going to be tier 5. Oh, my God, it's so good. We have so many pikes. Our army is going to be an anti-cavalry machine. Uh, also, that is a very nice longsword as well. How does that compare to our siege attire longsword out of interest? Because that seems pretty good, right? So right now we have a sword that has a 110 swing factor and 100 uh, thrust damage. Uh, so it's a little bit better on the thrust, but worse on the swing. 20 speed, 21 speed is the current one we have. And the thrust speed, 
It's probably a little bit different. And this also has a better sweet spot as well. So it's easier to find the enemy weak points. A very nice sword. But ours is actually surprisingly a better. So I'll take that. And we'll also replace our armor as well. No longer are we wielding the Britannian uh, armor whatsoever. We are more in our knightly equipment. I say that. And also this cape is kind of... Uh, enemy-esque, but that's fine whatsoever. So yeah, annoyingly, our Lord did get captured. We could go for a little bit of a, uh, a prison hunt as well. Try and free him from the prison. Could be really interesting uh, if they do throw him in there. What I want to make sure that we do is buy any water that we have access to. We still have 240 barrels, but for the most part, we are going to be running low. You know, it's not going to be an infinite amount of resources. So we have to be a little bit careful. Make sure we have everything sold. I have no idea why I've got five of these padded short coats. Uh, okay, we'll take that. We're also up to four million as well, which puts us one step close to forming our very own Dejura Kingdom. I think we need just under five. Oh, that's gone up. I wonder if it's because we're taking more land that the price of it is going up because, of course, it's going to then legally be taking more settlements and the richer the settlements will higher the price. I think that does make sense. However, with Charis now, we should be making like an extra 20k or so uh, from the tax on markets. We'll be in a really good situation there. Let's not also forget to make sure we put someone in power as well, one of the current uh, lords of the uh, settlement, and we'll continue on our work on the fortifications. Uh, it'll be done in a... Oh my god, it's a long time. Probably because it's only just been taken and they have no food, which should hopefully sort itself out now that the uh, villagers can return here and help out. So I wouldn't mind maybe catching a lord or two. Scattering them off to the winds is also not a bad idea. Oh, we should also send the rest of the lords we captured into our prison before they all escape. Let's go back and do that. Okay, so now they're in our dungeon. Let's... Oh, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm very tempted to break my army apart. I also don't want to do anything too crazy. Also, it just said somebody rebelled. Oh, look at this. They've rebelled against Belandia, but they've also... Did they take this? No, that's part of Belandia. Okay, but this isn't. Yeah, this is risen in rebellion. That's good for us. That'll draw some more of their armies north. Now, the question is, do we want to attempt to take more castles? Ideally, like, this would be a great conquest, and then conquering this as well would take the valley for us, which would be a very, uh, very, very strong place to be. I should also make another uh, lord, so we just have more clans to draw soldiers from. But also, this war does need to come to an end at some point. I am in desperate, desperate need of, like, time to rebuild. I also, yeah, actually haven't looked at that as well. Um, how will be all, how are all the other wars going right now? So this seems to be under siege by Sturgey. The Northern Empire have conquered a decent amount of territory. Batania seem like they're trying to push out and have actually regained a lot of their former settlements. So shout out to them. The Azari are actually getting beaten back. They would pushed out and taken a few more of these uh, northern settlements. I also love this red banner as well by the Kuzais. It looks awesome. And um, the Kuzais themselves are taking a little bit of land. So movement has occurred in these wars, but we'll have to see exactly what happens on Oh, look at that. Britannia are taking this as well. I say Britannia haven't done much, but they are actually coming back. Something to note as well as I'm going to go over here and siege this, I think, is that we can't actually peace out quite yet either, even if we wanted to. We have to wait 40 days and the war's been going on for about 35. So we still have a little bit more time. And I think in that time, we're going to at least try and conquer this castle as it would kind of guard our, our, our entrance into Charis and the other coastal cities that we do have. And then we have kind of castles guarding that and then also guarding into our territory. I also really want to take this from Britannia just to kind of really clean out our coastal line of settlements. Uh, so that'll probably be our next conquest. Something we also have to be a little bit cautious on now is that we do only have about 600 men. Uh, that's a lot less than the seven, 800 men we had previously. So that means that they, uh, they could amass a little bit of an army. However, I feel like Valandia's forces are severely depleted. We've beaten them about seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times. Yeah, what the hell happened to them? They're down to 11,000 men. Seriously, that is insane. Did they just like, have they just like uh, decreased their banners or something? I'm actually really interested to know what happened there because they had like 25 to 30,000 men at the beginning of this war. We've killed 6,000, of course. But even, so, I guess it's because we've got their lords in prison and that's like preventing them from rebuilding up armies and stuff. They've taken a big hit, whatever, whatever way they've done. Uh, yeah, they're, they're looking kind of embarrassing. 
seemingly seems like it is Siege Central in today's episode. We're probably going to get another one after this battle as well. Uh, we're, go we're currently conquering the settlement. We were obviously just sieging. But we're going to move on to Saga after this one. I think just conquering this land and then peacing out, that should be roughly around about the 40 day mark. So peace can be achieved. Oh, I love this settlement as well. There's just so many amazing Valandian castles, especially because we are Saga! fighting in the snow as well with our golden armor glimmering off of our, our, our shoulder pads and our chest pieces it looks really good one downside actually of having good siege equipment is that you are uh you are kind of tied to it so you are forced to actually uh wait for you know the equipment to get pushed up and just look how amazing that looks the realistic weather mod is truly something else. I think it makes the, uh, the castle and everything else just look so, so, so cool uh, in the distance. Especially as our men go pushed up and everything else. We do also actually have a battering ram now. So we can rely on that to, uh, to come up and actually smash down this gate across the bridge. Unfortunately, though, no artillery. That would be great for destroying these parapets, allowing us to hit the enemy archers and push them back a little bit more. Okay, boys, let's get this ram up there. I want to smash through this gate and storm the settlement as quickly as physically possible. The nice thing also about these uh, type of siege towers is it is just a simple charge up. So even though the, the AI has pretty good defensive positions, because we're not having to go up ladders, we're just running up a ramp, we can get a lot more men into the position a little bit quicker uh, which is always nice let's make sure we get on this position as well oh nice we're already through let's go 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 my great sword should do a pretty good job here at smashing through the gate these are one of the easier gates to actually destroy yeah 22 damage isn't as good as a an axe but still fine nonetheless i was actually just wondering can i shoot an arrow through this and actually hit someone is that something i can oh it is something i can do i can go full on legolas at the mines of moria for whatever reason my men haven't seemingly come up to destroy this they're just like sitting back there so I guess we'll give them the command, maybe, if I select them. And then now are they going to come charging in now? Yeah, let's go, go. Let's smash this down, boys. Break it down. There we go. Good. And I can still kind of utilize my men shooting through. Annoyingly, we've actually seemingly already seized the castle. So let's get some nice little views on that in the snow. Ah, oh, the realistic weather mod is truly so cinematic. The boys utilizing the ladders to get down and the infantry coming over, clearing out the gates. They're going to break through this. Come on, someone open that gate up. I mean, we are very close. For some reason, I'm outside the fortress. So I guess we'll just watch it as it unfolds. And we're about to come flying through that gate it's going to come down any second now and that's going to completely open up their flank i mean not that we need it the great swords are tearing them apart bit by bit inch by inch and there you go the gate is now down rest of our army can pour through and clear out the lightly armored garrison we've even got men back here as well clearing out some of the stalls this poor fellow has seemingly met his end and i think we've got a few archers back there some soldiers on the oh this is a really cool position as well a very deadly position at that you can fire right into my men but i'm just I, i'd be kind of interested to know how much damage their crossbows actually do because they are low tier crossbows so maybe it won't be doing as much as a, a higher tier crossbow i mean obviously that's quite self-explanatory of course it won't but I, i'm just interested to know how much and there you go the castle has been conquered we lost we lost 19 men my lord yeah, sieges are maybe a little bit too easy right now with our army. I guess what could be kind of an interesting, uh, I guess, challenge for us to do is maybe go and recruit, like, put our entire army in a garrison and just recruit a bunch of low-tier soldiers and kind of go from there because right now we're not really having much trouble something else that could also be fun is just going around by myself like letting the ai once we've formed maybe a, another clan or two and had a bit of peacetime do their own thing and then we just go around by ourselves they kind of deal do their thing and we do our thing that could be kind of cool oh i have actually also noticed that we are severely lacking on food in this settlement that is not good we might have to initiate some form of uh rationing just for now yeah let's enable food rationing just to keep the settlement a little bit more intact we need to bump that loyalty up which is well, loyalty is actually fine let the people starve i guess but it will basically mean that the garrison is going to be really struggling uh, and the prisoners are going to also be going to uh getting damaged as well oh wow we also just picked up a ton of water where did all this water come from it must have been like in the settlement uh, hold or something. Okay, I'll take that. I'll also give up some food as well. We can make a good profit giving up a bunch of this food. Uh, that's 100k right there. Uh, we also have some cheese that is selling for a very nice profit. Uh, and then I guess we want to store some water here. We can do that as well. Uh, so let's go to the keep 
And let's go to the stash. And let's just store a bit of water here. Because we don't need to be carrying this much. It's not like we're going into Azurai land. Uh, so we'll just store it in like 350 barrels. And we can come back and get that at any time. So just make sure I remember. And speaking of forgetting, what I should do before I do is actually give away Garantor Castle and also this one as well, Elvina Castle. So let's do that right now. We are outside of the settlement. Let's go to our party. And I guess Arik Ironside can immediately be named into a lord. We do need more lords. So let's go ahead and reward him for his services. We'll give him a Firth and we'll give him this one. This one's a little bit more safer. Um, so it's perfect. We'll, we'll pay the money. Um, and this can be the Iron Side clan. So we'll accept him into our into our clan and that would be very nice i am also a little bit curious whether or not our banner color will change when we reload the game i'm not sure if that's going to or what because right now it's like white and red which is a little bit was kind of like inverse to what we have yeah i, I don't know i don't know we'll, we'll have to see uh, either way we'll give away this other castle as well alabina castle can also be given away uh which will be very useful so let's go ahead and uh make it to edon who has again just become a companion today so you guys are extremely lucky to uh, to get this uh, so we'll reward him for his services we'll give him Elevina castle exactly yep and we will make sure we do that and then Ala, um Ala, Alaslan yeah Alaslan uh, butchered that but <laughs> I'm the king I doesn't matter <laughs> Boom. Okay, two more uh, castles under our... Or oh, two more clans under our control, which is actually making our party size look pretty goddamn good. We can actually also make a couple more parties once we get the lawful land, which we'll make sure we do. Um, but yeah, we've got like a handful of parties. If we go to our kingdom, we'll actually be able to see it. Like, we're not looking bad now. Yeah, we've got, what, four parties. They all love me. They have a couple of lords. They should be leveling up as well. I wish there was an easier way to level up these clans. I'm not sure if there really is, uh, but it would be nice if there was and hopefully they get more members they have children and they age faster and we can yeah just have a much larger army speaking of which this lord doesn't know what's about to hit him i don't know what he was thinking trying to take one of my settlements but the prince is now uh hopefully our prisoner yes he is indeed perfect and a little bit of extra leveling up for our soldiers also uh, i will always take that so we'll grab them and i guess we're taking the loot because we need money we need yeah, we need a lot of money especially if we're planning on conquering this last settlement as well and that's gonna be our final act in the war i think if we can i'll go to a few more of these settlements as well so boys the boys can recruit there is also a 500 man army there which actually matches us number wise and actually beats us but i want to take this how many men has 800 defenders that's a little bit scary that's a bit more of a challenge bro i'll take that the question is can we take this before they can take that castle hopefully we can get the siege camp built down they still have plenty of food balance of power bar is yeah still massively in my favor it's gonna be all militia uh, until unless any of the other lords try and stop me uh, which they can't you go they're sieging me right now it is really a race against the clock because ideally has it been 40 days yet i guess we can check really quickly can we peace out um we can't because we're sieging okay so I, I think it has been 40 days so if we can rush this siege again I, it's not the most exciting battle because i'm not bombarding walls or anything but they already took that they took that fast as well i mean i guess at the end of the day it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we lost that and we just left the land deal with it and we just took this castle again that's not like awful as long as we keep Charis and we keep this as two very profitable cities that will help us just make tons of money so let's leave the assault once more as i said if this is siege episode we actually really have any good siege equipment here it is just a blitz for the walls it does look very cool though as we push up in our golden and white i still can't get over how glorious it looks let me through boys let me jump my way through i need to get up there and we need to conquer that castle they actually have plenty of uh, of archers this time, so it's going to be a bit painful. Luckily, their arrows do no damage, and that's probably one of the reasons why we're winning so much. Is our BM just means that our like high tier? Oh no, seven damage. Okay, they do rack up some kills. That's probably you though, right? With the better bow, only five. Either way, we're going to get up here with our great sword. We're going to be the first over. We're going to show the men exactly how we conquer a settlement or two. Start slicing immediately down. Oh, I can already see this is not going to go well for me. We're just going to start blasting. Just blast, 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 blast. We need men. Where is my bodyguard? We need reinforcements. I made a grave mistake. Just block up, block up, block up. We just need more boys to get in. There you go. We're starting to form a bit of a shield around me. That's what we want to have happen. Let's start hitting them hard. Okay, here we go. We've kind of made a bit of a conclave here. I sacrificed myself. I am low. Ah, oh, the spear's going overhead. Bodyguard, protect. Okay, we're down already. I guess I took a bit too much damage in that initial jump up. 
But I did still make a pretty nice conclave as that guy gets lobbed off the ladders so the rest of everybody else could get in. It's the spears who can, like, kind of frost over the side and do the damage. We have a shield, though, this time. And it might not be a bad idea to actually set that shield up on my siege attire. Can we break our way through, try and draw a few of them out into this, like, nice little choke point here. We have a very deadly weapon, but I feel like we do more damage here than it actually does do. Like, 60 damage is fine, but this is like a big scimitar. And if I can't get a proper hit on it and get a good, like, pommel hit or something... Oh, them crossbows hurt. I say the crossbows hurt, they really don't. <laughs> okay, to their heads, though, we do a decent amount of damage. We also have a nice spear, which I imagine also does some good damage if we can keep the enemy at range. Yeah, it does good damage if we keep the enemy at range. That shield's kind of blocking me, though. Push him back, only 14 damage. Pull out our sword now. These guys are really out for blood. Should be okay, but only 13 damage. There we go. I mean, we chopped his head off, but not a lot of damage. And we're already pushing them back on the, the battlements now as well. He's using his spear as best as he can. Let's keep on hitting him. Keep our shield up. Cautious of that crossbow. There you go. That's the damage I want to see. As he just blocks my weapon. Block this, my man. Block this. Oh, no. I totally didn't fall down. And we're actually taking some pretty heavy casualties here. We lost 200 men so far. And their reinforcements are only increasing. Okay. I mean, we need to get that gate open or something. I mean, this is the pain when you don't have siege equipment. Look at that. They're just reinforcing. Okay, we need to break through this. ASAP. Deal with their archers. Okay, we're starting to do a bit more damage here now. The spear's doing a good job. Pull up that shield. That guy doesn't even have a helmet, so he should be easy pickings. See if these guys are a little bit more armored. But if we aim for their weak spots, we should be okay. And then one to the head. He's got a good job of blocking it the head. So let's, let's smash him with our shield. Block this and then hit him with our shield back. Okay, he's going to miss us, which is good. I read that quite nicely. There you go. He's down. There's an archer here. My bodyguard are now fighting towards me. Good, good, good. Yeah, they definitely made us pay here, but it's kind of to be expected considering just how, like, experienced up this settlement actually is. You yeah, know, this is one of their major trading hubs in all of Volandia. Not even Volandia, also all of Caradia, to be honest. Even with that, though, they are not enough to hold back our tide. I say that, we lost a lot of men here. I almost 300 men. That's, this is the most bloody siege that we've had. Uh, to be expected, though, also. Which is good to see, like, that the sieges aren't just a complete walkover. Uh, considering we didn't really have anything of immense quality here either. And here we go. Clearing out the last turret. There's barely anyone back here. These poor soldiers should really surrender if there's any such thing as a surrender. Because, yeah, we're conquering that, there you go. The battle has been a one. Uh, managed to take down 800 of them. We lost 300, though. And I lost... What? How many did I lose? I only lost... See, how many did I lose? Was I at the top? I was, right? Yeah, I was... A, no, I wasn't. Was I? Yeah, I was. Yeah, 50 men, 94 wounded. That's pretty scary, but I should see the end to the war. Don't know what these looter heroes are all about. Did they join the defense or something? Uh, I don't really know what's happening here. I have never experienced this bug before where... <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times I click enter, it's not going away. Maybe if we can't even save an exec, we're going to have to replay that battle. God damn it. So we are just going to auto-resolve this one. Again, hopefully there's not too many casualties. That was actually considerably way better than when I fought it myself. Uh, probably because I did actually build siege equipment this time. Uh, I wanted to make sure that they had conquered a few more of the settlements. And okay, it just seems like we can never take this settlement. The AI is too smart for me. Okay, well, I guess it is what it is. The AI is going to deploy sneaky tactics. So am I. So I decided to save before we lost this castle. And I think we can now just peace out, right? If we go to diplomacy, uh, still three more days. Okay, so let's just go and sit in this settlement for three more days. Make sure they don't take it as seemingly we can never conquer uh conquer saga ever again uh, as they've deployed the bandits as defenses okay enough time has passed and it is time for peace we can pay them 100 gold a day of course why not we could also just pay nothing which i guess we'll do but the difference is your armies and people are exhausted from a conflict with the land here and have given up the fight you must accept the terms of defeat uh, i don't think i want to do that i mean we have to but 
I wish I could just say no. We won that war for sure. But now we're at peace. That's great. My allies to the north are doing a great job. How's it going to be his armies looking? Vlandi is going to... Yeah, Southern Empire. Oh, she is yeah, looking strong. No wonder she's fighting back on the Azdrai. I don't really know what's happened to everybody's armies because they were up in like the tens of thousands. But I guess the constant warring has really hurt people. So now that we've conquered this, which is good, we want to go back to friendly territory and we want to basically release everybody out into the wilderness to build up their armies again. I think when we're at full strength, we're going to have close to 10,000 men, which is going to be great. It's also going to give a good opportunity for everything else to increase. But even with food rationing, we're still struggling light or did that, was that before this save? Let's double check. Because that's yeah, we do have food rationing on, which isn't going to make people happy, but it means they can eat, I guess, at least, uh, which is better than nothing. Cool. Everybody's broken apart now. They should go off and do their own thing. We are also no longer at war with anybody. Oh, this is also before I gave away the castles. Okay, I'll do that really quickly. I'm also going to go over here and probably buy some more workshops to get our economy going. Yeah, look at that color as well. It looks great on these banners. It's a shame it doesn't change on the actual castles because it does look very good. Workshops, I believe at the moment we have two. So I'm just going to buy up a bunch of these stuff and I can change their actual equipment a little bit later on. Oh, I'd like you to convert to my faith, I guess that's possible. See it done. Uh, I don't really know what just happened. We spent some piety. That's something I haven't messed around with much. Uh, but yeah, we're going to buy his oil oil press. Oh, we could also like to offer him some slaves as well. That's interesting that we could do that. Uh, getting a caravan up and running wouldn't be a bad idea either. But let's for now continue just to buy all of these. They're probably not going to pay themselves off, so doing this is a little bit silly. But I just want like a big fat number of income coming in. We're making 63 grand, so what's the worst that can happen? Oh, wow. Look at that as well. A 2,000-man army by the Western Empire. That's pretty crazy crazy very assaulting that settlement as well to claim it back it seems like they're yeah it's a real back and forth between Britannia I'm surprised Britannia have any fight left in though it does seem like the northern empire have conquered the major settlement of Kulistad right there and they're doing a pretty good job they push around here at all yeah they've taken this castle also because it's doing some decent jobs up there in the north as well a few castles changing hands but nothing too serious right there I wouldn't mind going after this settlement to be honest and conquering this from the uh, from the western empire that could be a cool settlement to have as like a little outpost I think our next war though has to be against the Azurai and the goal would be to kind of conquer everything west of the river that'd be a very very nice uh, jewel of my own. and there we go we have our all of our workshops now under our command so that's uh, all of these again some of these are still just getting up and running we're gonna upgrade them all i is it it's not even worth it really is it we're spending like 15 grand to boost productivity and honestly they're probably not going to be uh you know effective in that there you go we've now got everything hopefully that'll start making us some serious money i think if we've got six of them that should boost our income and whilst they build up their stock it kind of gives them a lot of cash and then they kind of blow all that they sell all their goods give me my return and there you go <gasps> garris has just usurped our role here as well how could he how could he yeah we'll, we'll accept all these marriages as well as long as it's to our family which i think yeah it is to our our lords i want to do that so that we basically just gain as many characters as physically possible which i think is definitely the way to go about it as well i'm actually interested to see how much it costs now that we've taken back castle to defend the kingdom it's still 6.1 i think that's gone up slightly it was five point something so yeah it does seem like every castle we take does increase that cost which is something to think about i mean we are only like a million and a half away so we could save fairly quickly for that gold and probably sell some other gear that we have lying around uh, to make some profit even like kind of maneuver some stuff around but yeah i think that was a good final part of the war and that's where i'm gonna wrap things up in today's episode a little bit of a short one today don't worry i'll make the next episode really long very much appreciate all the love that we're getting on this series your guys comments are, are actually like super heartwarming so i very much appreciate it but you guys are still enjoying this series and as i said things are going to get more and more exciting I know a bunch of you guys have said not to start a world war, but my finger's itching. I'm ready to hit that red button and launch the nukes and start the uh, the World War of Caradia and to see who comes out on top. And uh, that might not be next episode or the next episode after that, but I think it's coming and I think it'll make the series extremely funny to watch. Be sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.